welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I will show you how to make this beautiful braided cable knit throw using the brand new yarn by Red Heart called Huga. You will fall in love with this most wonderful soft yarn with a soft furry texture. Not only will you love knitting with this bulky weight yarn, you'll enjoy wrapping yourself up in luxury. For this particular throw, you will need six balls of Red Heart Huga yarn. You also need a pair of size 15, 24 inch circular needles. You'll need a cable needle, a tapestry needle, a good pair of scissors, and I recommend some stitch markers. The reason you use circular needles for this pattern is to accommodate the number of stitches you will be casting on for the throw. I highly recommend using circular needles for this throw. You'll have a much more pleasant and huga knitting experience. Once you have your materials, you'll also need that free pattern where you'll find the list of materials as well. The free pattern is available at redheart.com and I'll put a link to that in the video description box right down there below. And while you're down there, please smash that like button as my kids say to let other people know you enjoyed this video. Once you have that free pattern and your materials, join me back here and I will teach you everything you need to know, including a couple tips in order to make this super luxurious and fantastic throw. You won't be disappointed. To make this pattern, we will start off with a slip knot and we will be casting on a total of 105 stitches. For the 105 stitches you are going to cast on, you will use your preferred method of casting on. For this video, I will be demonstrating how to do the knitted cast on. You place the slip knot directly onto the needle that you will hold in your left hand. Take the right needle, Go ahead and insert it into the stitch you just put onto the left hand needle. Take your working yarn, wrap it around your right hand needle, pop that out that stitch on your left hand needle and extend it up a little bit. Now you take your left hand needle, swivel around and scoop that stitch and place it on your left hand needle. You just created one stitch. You now take your right hand needle, Go into that new stitch, just like you did before. Wrap your yarn around your right hand needle. Come out, extend, swivel and scoop. And that's very important. You wanna make sure you swivel and scoop. Let me show you how to do this one more time. Extend, swivel and scoop. Go in, around, out, extend, swivel and scoop. For this pattern, you want to place 105 stitches on your needle. Notice that as you cast on your stitches, the stitches themselves go beyond the actual needle and they begin to rest on the cable portion of the cable needle. That's perfectly natural and that's what you want to happen. Obviously, I'm using a fewer number of stitches for this example, so that way I can show you how to work through the stitches without taking a long time to do it. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the pattern. The lower border of this pattern has us do a very simple ribbing. We will knit this very first stitch. So I go into it just like I've been doing before, wrap my yarn around my right hand needle and come out. Only this time, the stitch I went into right here, I want it to jump off. So I will let that jump off. You'll notice now in the pattern, it has a star next to the next set of instructions. That star indicates that's where you are going to work your repeat. So we will be doing a purl one, knit one repeat for the rest of the row. When you go from a knit to a purl, you wanna make sure you take your yarn between your two needles. Now we will go into the next stitch as if to purl, yarn over our needle, and notice when I yarn over, I go over top of the needle. And then I will pop out that stitch and off. Move my yarn to between my needles back to the back and knit the next stitch. Move my yarn between the needles to the front and purl the next stitch. As you go along, go ahead and move the stitches up on the needle so that way you can access them easier. 
Don't forget to move the yarn between your needles each time you go from a knit to a purl. Let me show you how to do this if you hold your yarn in your other hand. Some people like to hold their yarn in their left hand and to do so, you still knit just like normal, but it makes it a little bit easier to move the yarn between the needles to the front to get to that purl stitch. I'm still moving my yarn between my needles and I'm still knitting one and still purling one. It's the same motion. I'm just holding my yarn in the opposite hand. The last stitch of your row should be a knit one. And you'll notice now all of your stitches on the other side of your cable needle and you are still going to treat this as if it's a straight. So you will place this needle into your left hand Put the spare needle into your right hand and you will carry on. We move on to row two, which has us start off with a purl once. We bring our yarn forward. We will purl this first stitch. And then we see a star, which has us work a repeat of knit one, purl one, all the way down the row. So you will go ahead and do this all the way down the row. And you'll notice that your knits are starting to go on top of knits and your purls are going on top of purls. You repeat rows one and two three more times, then row one one more time. Once you've done that, you're ready for the body of the throw. Once you have completed all of the one by one ribbing, your piece will look a little something like this. Again, obviously this is smaller, but you can see here that the columns of knits are bordered by columns of pearls. So you have a really nice, very subtle, easy knit one, purl one ribbing. Now for the body of the throw, we are going to work in garter stitch and stockinette stitch. Remember when I suggested getting stitch markers? This is where you will use those stitch markers. I like to place stitch markers in between the areas that I want to keep in stock and net stitch. It's just a visual reminder for me to say, hey, these stitches need to be a little bit different every other row because I want to keep them in stock and net stitch. In my little example down here, I will just be using two stitch markers because my center portion here will be my stockinette stitch and outside here will be my garter stitch. So let's go ahead and jump in. To begin the cable pattern, we go ahead and we start off by knitting 10 stitches. So we're no longer working in the knit one, purl one ribbing pattern. We are simply going to knit 10 stitches. After you knit those 10 stitches, you'll notice that there is a star indicating that that is where you are going to work your repeat. The star indicates that you will be doing a purl nine knit 10 all the way across the throw. You'll notice that I just knit my 10 and this is where I'm placing my first marker. So I'm going to place my marker after 10 stitches, place a marker. Now I will purl nine. So let's go ahead, bring my yarn between my needles and I will purl nine stitches. After I purl those nine stitches, I go ahead and place another marker. Then I will go ahead, put my yarn between my needles again, put it back to the back and then knit 10. Now for me, this knit 10 will put me at the end of my row, but for you, you will have more stitches to work. So after you knit 10, you will place another marker 
and then you will purl nine and then place a marker and then purl knit 10, so on and so forth. Remember that between those markers, it is there to help you remember that something is going to be different between those markers. At the end of my row, I go ahead and turn my work and now I'm on row one of the pattern. So that was my setup row where I placed my markers and row one of the pattern just has us knit. So I'm holding my yarn in my opposite hand this time, but I'm still just knitting across the row. When I get to those stitch markers, I'm simply going to move them from one needle to the next. So let me get to the end of this row. Let's see, there's my marker. I'm simply going to take that marker and slip it over. And then I knit these. So there's nothing different on this particular row. We're just knitting the whole row. At the end of the row, go ahead and turn your work and carry on with row two. Row two is virtually a repeat of row one. We will knit 10 and then we have our marker, so we'll slip our marker and that's where our star is. So we will purl nine and then slip our marker, knit 10, so on and so forth. So I'm here at the start. I go ahead and I work my knit 10. Slip my marker and now I will purl nine. Slip my marker and then I knit ten so on and so forth. Obviously, once again, yours will be longer. Mine is just a one little repeat. At this point, you should be able to see that you have some ribbing going on and the stitches between your markers You'll notice that one set will look like they are just a series of the reverse stockinette. And then you'll see the other set, they look like ribs or um, garter stitch. Now, as I move on to row three, this is where we actually introduce our cables. So on row three, we are going to start working our cable stitches in the stockinette section of the work that we've just prepared. Let's go ahead and jump in. For row three, we start off by knitting 10. So one, two, three. For me, I slip my marker. And now I need to do what is written as a three slash three LC. If you don't know what that is, you're probably not the only one. You will look in the top of the pattern where it says special stitches. And that's typically where you will find the instructions for sets of pattern stitches that are abbreviated like that. For this particular cable stitch, we will use our cable needle. We will slip the next three stitches onto our cable needle. So we go into the next three stitches as if to purl, put those on our cable needle, and we'll hold that to the front of our work. Okay, so they're just hanging out there. Now I will go ahead, I will knit the next three stitches from my left hand needle. What I like to do now is take these stitches I move to my cable needle and I like to place them back onto my left hand needle. You absolutely could knit those directly off of the cable needle, but I find that cumbersome. So I like to put them back on my left hand needle and then knit those stitches from the left hand needle. Okay, so that is the three slash three LC, okay? Once you've done that, you go ahead and you will knit 13. Well, Marley, I have 10 and I have three. What I want you to do is I want you to knit to your marker, okay? So let's go ahead, we will knit to the marker. So knit three, so that's the three of our 13. We slip our marker and that leaves us with 10 stitches, which is what we have planned out, perfect, right? So I would go ahead and knit my 10 stitches. 
For your particular throw, you would go ahead and continue on with your repeat. As I set this down, I can already see that something is starting to happen right there, okay? Because all I did is I did that cable stitch moving them over, okay? Just one more quick reminder for those of you who are following along with the pattern. After we do this cable stitch, the instructions say to knit 13, and we've already placed our marker here, so we know that there are 10 stitches here, and we know there's three stitches left after we do this cable, so that's where your 13 stitches are, okay? So don't get confused because we added that stitch marker there, okay? That's where we got our 13 stitches. We just did the three remaining stitches of our nine, and then the next 10 stitches. Once you finish row three, you'll notice that row four is just a repeat of row two, and then rows five through eight, you're gonna repeat rows one and two until you get to row nine. On row nine, that's when we do our next cable stitch. So go ahead, work on your project, get to row nine, join me back here, and let's learn the other cable stitch. Once you've worked through row eight, you'll notice that you have a little bit of stockinette fabric going on beyond where you did your initial cable. If you still have your stitch markers, you'll notice that that cable, obviously it didn't go across the entire section of that stitch marker. Remember, we had three stitches remaining. In row nine, this is where we are going to incorporate those three stitches we had remaining in our original nine, and we will create another cable. This is what gives us the braided cable look. Let's go ahead and jump into the pattern with row nine. We begin by knitting 10 stitches. Really easy for me because I have that nice marker there so I don't even have to count because I know my marker is holding the place of those 10 stitches, like it's holding that spot. When I get to the marker, I slip it over and I'm right here to my nine stitches. As I read the pattern, it says to knit 13. Ah, this is very similar to how we ended the last one, right? No worries, we have those markers there, we know what to do. We know that we just did 10, we have our marker, so we just need to knit three more, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I will knit three stitches. Now, I have my six stitches remaining here, and this is where I will be doing my three slash three R C. So it's a three slash three right cable. So in order to do that, all I will do is grab my cable needle once again, this is a cable needle, slip three stitches onto my cable needle as if to purl. Now I'm gonna hold that cable, cable needle to the back of my work. So I'm just gonna let it go to the back of my work this time. Okay, so it's behind my work. I go ahead, I knit the next three stitches on my left hand needle. Now, just like before, I want to take these stitches that were on my cable needle here, okay? So I'm gonna make sure I don't twist them, make sure I have them all straight still. Yep, there they are. I'm gonna take those stitches and I'm going to place them back onto my left-hand needle because I find it easier to knit them when they're back onto my left-hand needle. Once they're up there, see those three stitches? I can go ahead and knit those three stitches slip my marker, and I would carry on. Now, in this pattern, remember, it says to knit 13. And I wanna remind you, we have our markers there to allow us to distinguish those 10 stitches that we're just keeping in garter stitch, okay? So whenever the pattern refers to knitting 13, it is assuming that you're having those three stitches inside your stitch marker area. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, to me, I really feel like the stitch markers help out a lot with knowing where you are in the pattern. As you take a look down here now, we have two cable stitches done. So this is the one that we held to the front. This is the one we just completed when we held the stitches to the back. And as you work this along, continuing in the pattern, you'll notice that it will start to look like it's braiding on each other all the way up the throw, giving you that really great look of the braided cable knit throw. Let's take a look at that throw one more time. Isn't this throw gorgeous? I'm telling you, once you get this Huga yarn in your hands and you make this fantastic throw, you're going to just want to work through it so quickly. 
Once you get through row 175 of the throw, you'll then go into the border. The border is just the knit one, purl one ribbing as we started, so super simple. Once you get through that border, you'll bind off your stitches, weave in your ends, and you're ready to snuggle up with your favorite crochet hook and maybe a book or maybe some Netflix on the TV and really enjoy a nice relaxing time at home. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this braided cable knit throw by Lisa Gentry. It is a free pattern over at redheart.com. Go over there, check it out. Grab yourself some wonderful Red Heart Huga yarn. It is just fantastic. Like I can't even, I wish you guys could feel it through the screen because it's just so incredibly soft and squishy. You will love this. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you'll come back here for more videos just like this one. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. Thanks so much. Bye. Everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Learn with Marley Bird. Visit youtube.com forward slash Marley Bird.